Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft. And the other day, I showed you the strap system that I used to attach the wool blanket to the bottom of my Rush 24. And I got asked how to sew this together. And now, I'm not going to show you how I did it on the straps that I used because I found a much easier way of doing it. And so I'm going to show you the new technique that I have and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys sew together a lot more than just straps. Stay tuned. Alright, so when it comes to the straps that I made a long time ago, all I did is I took some webbing and some monofilament line and I whip stitched it with a sail needle and tied a couple knots and this has lasted me for a really long time. But if I was going to do it again, what I would do is I would use this speed stitcher. Uh, now this is something that I got from BattleBox. Uh, there are different kinds. There is one where the bobbin is up here by the needle. And I kind of think that one might be easier to use because you can use your thumb to kind of push more thread out or reel in more thread. Where this one, the bobbin is hidden in the bottom and from what I can tell this one holds a lot more thread uh, but it's just a little bit harder to use and so you kind of got to pick kind of got to pick your method do you want to have it easier to use with less thread or have more thread and have it a little harder to use but uh yeah I really like using this thing either way it's a really good system so I'm going to be using my speed stitcher I have a uh, tension lock that I cut off from my MMSS stuff sack. And then I have a three foot, two inch piece of webbing. And I'm just gonna fold over two inches and put the uh, tension lock on there. And so, I'm gonna show you here. Now, what I find is important is where the fold is. I want that double layer to be on the same side as the wool blanket or the sleeping bag because that way when I cinch it down the flap is cinching onto my wool blanket or it's cinching onto my sleeping bag where if it was on the outside it would catch on things and it would probably come undone. And so what I want to do is I want to make my loop and I want to determine how to make it so that my, the part that comes off, the loop end, uh, is cinched onto my wool blanket or my sleeping bag. So it looks like it has to go on there just like this. So I'm going to feed it up this way and you can do it however you want this is just how I think so now the tag end is going to be on the part that cinches so here I'll show you so when I thread this through the smooth end is on the top so it can't catch on anything and the tag end is going to be cinched onto whatever I'm cinching and I like that better because it keeps everything smooth nothing's going to catch on anything so I have it right just like this so now I'm going to measure two inches so my tag end is two inches which is going to give me exactly three feet of webbing plus my tension lock and now, when I made these black ones, I just whip stitched the end, and that worked out really well. But using the speed stitcher, uh, you don't really have to do that. You can go wherever you want. You can still do the end if you want. You can go closer to the tension lock. You can go right in the middle. You can have different rows. Uh, for me, I'm going to go closer to where it meets so that the tension lock has some wiggle room. So I'm going to go closer to the bottom. 
Make sure I didn't move it. So I'm gonna go closer to the bottom and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pierce through from the bottom up So I'm going to go through both ends, I'm going to pull my, all the thread through, and then this is where having that wheel up top would come in handy, because then I could feed more thread in, or reel it in if I have too much, but this will work. So I'm going to make sure that my thread is way longer the the longer the thread is compared to your project so you want your leftover thread that you pull through to be the width of your project the more thread you have the easier it's going to be to sew this together but you're going to have a lot of waste at the end and so you kind of just got to judge how easy do you want it to be and how much waste do you want? They kind of go hand in hand. You either get it really easy, but you waste a lot, or it's harder to thread once you get to the end. It's harder to thread, but you don't waste as much. And so that's something that you got to keep in mind as you're doing this. And so you got all your thread across your project. I got a lot of excess because I'm making a video, so I want it as easy as possible. And then you just pull out. You move over however far you see fit. You go through both again. And then when you pull back, you're gonna make a little loop right next to that needle. And you're gonna take that excess thread that you pulled out and you're gonna put it through that eye. You're gonna put it right through that loop in your thread. And then you're gonna pull through and you're gonna pull both ends tight going to pull the needle tight and the thread on the outside tight and then you're just going to go through and you're going to do it again you're just going to keep going across the whole project and so when I get to the end of the project I go across the whole length and then I come back one and then I do the same thing I make my little loop and then I put this through just like I would but then that creates another loop since I went th backwards so I went all the way through the project and then I went backwards a little bit and so now I created that loop on my needle that I'm gonna go through and now I got a little D shape here I'm gonna go through that as well and that's gonna be my knot I'm going to go through the needle, I'm going to go through the little D that I made from going backwards. Here, I got to do it this way, I got to see what I'm doing. Okay, and then that's going to be my knot. So I'm going to pull everything tight. And then I take my lighter and then I instead of cutting the thread I just light it so I melted that off and now I'm going to burn the excess here and now this is wax this thread has a lot of wax in it and so by burning it like that all that wax is going into that final hole and it's sealing everything up So I just let it burn down. I let all that wax kind of make sure that everything is melting together. And so because it's all melting together and joining, uh, the knot should hold for a really long time. And now I have a really strong stitch here. And now I can take my bedroll, I can take whatever it is I need, and I can cinch her down nice and tight. 
and I don't have to worry about this coming apart. It's tough. So that's how I would do it. Uh, whip stitching this with fishing line works and I'm not going to say that it hasn't held up for a really long time. It does work. It's a really good system but this is just faster and way easier. It's super easy and so with that being said I want to know uh, do you own one of these speed stitchers and if you do is your bobbin up top or is it in the handle like mine and do you like using your thumb to adjust your uh, thread because I find that I I have a hard time getting it the right length especially that first push through when I'm pulling out across my project I have a hard time getting the amount of thread that I want you know I usually pull too much extra and I just leave too much extra because it's easier than trying to mess with this thing and so I might be upgrading to the one with the bobbin up top and so if you own one of those let me know in the description box down below uh, if you enjoy it then make sure to like and share this video to help spread that knowledge and those ideas to the people we care about most and as always don't forget to subscribe and come join the pack i have a new video every sunday and thursday and i can't wait to see you on the next one thanks guys